The Inferno is what most consider to be the single hardest piece of content in the entire game. 69 waves of brutal monsters that require you to be on top of your movement, gear switches, prayer switches, and to have an insane understanding of how game ticks work. It mainly boils down to you needing to be insanely precise with everything you do, and it's extremely unforgiving for the times that you mess up. When I maxed this account back in July of 2022, the Inferno was always on my list of goals to work towards after max. In fact, with a juicy little Tebow loan from one of my friends during the maxing party, the grind for the cape started the very next day. However, my only Inferno experience before this was getting a cape during the Shattered Relics League, which is where I learned the basics of the Inferno. And let's just say that the skills I learned during the leagues helped me understand the mechanics of the Inferno better, but it did a terrible job of preparing me for just how unforgiving this piece of content is. After weeks of trying and dozens of attempts, I made it to triple jads, but died to the second jad because I was one tick late to changing my prayers. And that was the farthest I got, and then the Tombs of a Masket came out, and I put the Inferno grind on hold, and now almost a full year since I maxed, I decided I'm sick of seeing this fire cape. I know I can do it, I can feel it in the air. It's time to commit to this grind. By the end of this video, I will have an Infernal Cape on my back. This is the gear setup that I'll be using. I'm too poor to afford a Twisted Bow, so I will be doing a Bofa Inferno. We got the full crystal, the blowpipe switch with dragon darts, the four-way mage switch featuring an ancient scepter as my mage weapon. Quick note from the editing booth, this whole video was recorded before Desert Treasure 2, so there were no quartzes to put in my scepter. The blood one would have been nice, but it didn't exist yet. Back to the video. I'm using my Max Cape rather than the Assembler because it has better defensive bonuses, it has a prayer bonus, and it functions as every skill cape in the game. So it has a built-in Holy Wrench, a daily stamina dose, extra hit points regeneration, and of course it saves ammo just like an Ava's device. I normally bring in around 7-8 to eight Brews, 2 Bastion Potions, a Stamina for Zuck, a Felidor Shield for extra prayer restoration, and the rest is just Super Restores. I don't believe there's anything left to talk about, so let's just hop into the Inferno and begin this grind that will 100% be testing my sanity. Hi there, hungry people. Uh, what did you just say? Hi there, hungry people. Today we're partnering with Factor, our awesome sponsor. Factor makes it possible for Extra Keen's community to get fresh, never frozen, ready-made meals delivered right to your door. Since there's no prep, there is no mess. And since there's no mess, it allows you to spend more time watching Extra Keen's channel. Click the link below or go to GoFactor75.com and use code POGSRECONACEP50 for 50% off your first box. Oh, well, thanks for the sweet deal. The very first thing we do when we get into the Inferno is we come over here and we drop a couple potions so that we can... Uh... Oh man, there's so much happening right off the bat. And speaking of bats, the bats are the first enemy we face in the Inferno. Well, besides the Nibblers, who spawn at the beginning of every wave, you just freeze those guys and try and kill them before they do damage to your pillars. But back to the bats. They attack you with a range attack every three ticks, and these attacks drain three run energy per hit, even if you're praying against it. And if they hit you off prayer, they also have a chance to drain your combat stats, which is super lame, so we try to safe spot or kill these guys as soon as possible. One of the most common places you'll be able to safe spot a bat is by standing here and blowpiping them, since they won't be able to reach you from here. The next enemy we face is possibly the one that makes the Inferno as hard as it is. The Blobs. Like all monsters in the Inferno, they're not super hard to kill by themselves, but when they're paired up with other monsters, that's when it gets difficult. These guys have a very weird attack cycle, which essentially boils down to it scanning your protection prayer on the third tick, and attacking with the opposite attack style on the sixth tick. If that didn't make sense, don't worry. You don't need to understand how it works, you just need to know how to counter it. Which is just by switching between Protect from Mage and Protect from Range every three ticks. It gets more complicated when the Majors and Rangers are out, but we'll get to that later. When the Blob dies, it spawns three little blobs, which each attack with a different attack style, indicated by their color. With these guys, what you want to do is just make sure they're clumped together, and then use Blood Barrage to kill them as soon as possible, because they always surprise me with how much damage they can do. Next up is the Meleer. This guy's pretty simple. They can only melee you, so safe spotting them is a breeze. The only thing that makes them a bit of a threat is that they can dig to you if they don't attack you for a certain amount of time. This is fine when they're by themselves, but can be annoying in the later waves. At wave 18, we see our first ranger, and at wave 35, we see our first major. I'm grouping these guys together because you essentially deal with them the exact same way. They both have a four tick attack speed, and they both hit very hard off prayer, 
so you want to always make sure that you're praying against their attacks. Like I said before, they're both pretty easy to deal with on their own, but when other enemies come out, that's when it can be difficult to manage, mainly when they're paired with blobs. The way that I deal with a blob and either a major or a ranger at the same time is with a method called the one tick blob flick. You just pray against either the major or the ranger, and as soon as you see their attack animation start, you switch to the opposite prayer and then start alternating every single tick back and forth. The metronome plugin helps a lot with this, by the way. The reason this works is because you're synced up with both the 4 tick attack cycle of the major or the ranger, and also with the 3 tick cycle of the blobs. There's also a method called the 2 tick blob flick, but I've never used that so I won't show it off. Here's a guide on that method if you want to see it. Eventually throughout the waves of the inferno, you get to the point where you encounter mages and rangers at the same time. And those all have very unique ways to solve them that I won't even begin to go over in this video. I'm just here to lay out the basics of the Inferno, but if you want an in-depth guide, definitely watch the exact guide that's linked in the description. At wave 67, the pillars fall and you fight Jad. This is the exact same as the Fight Caves Jad, except it has higher stats, so it should be pretty easy. Wave 68 is the infamous Triple Jads, one of the most intimidating aspects of the Inferno, but it's honestly not that bad. It's just like regular Jad, but faster. If you can beat all three Jads, then congratulations, you're onto the final boss of the Inferno. Tis Kalzuk. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, I have to get through the waves. So let's see how I do. Oh, there I go. Damn. <sighs> I'm so relieved that it's over. I get to not be in the Inferno anymore. <laughs> so I know the video just kind of started, but... I feel like I'm already uh, at the point where I want to give some update. The update is that I am having a really hard time actually doing the Inferno. And that's mainly because I hate it here. <laughs> I really hate the Inferno. It's like, it's just, it's just so demotivating to like, to die in the Inferno. I don't know what it is. Like, whenever I die, I literally can't bring myself to hop back in for another attempt for like, at least another couple days. So I don't have a lot of attempts in this video already. Um, but I'm about to go send another attempt, and hopefully I'll get to the point where I start at least sending one attempt every day. But yeah, th it's just it's just really draining. <laughs> I want to get this cape so bad, but like apparently not enough to actually hop into the Inferno. So, I guess if you need the motivation, then this is me saying you will never get the cape if you don't get in there and go for it. I'm telling that to you, but I'm also telling it to myself. I don't know. And if you may have noticed, um, we got the ward kit. Look at that, it's red now. It used to be blue, now it's red. Uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to my boy Jake C. Um, he carried me through, or I guess, yeah, I'm gonna say carried. <laughs> I was gonna say helped, but no. He carried me through a level 500 raid, and we got the ward kit, and then we also got the fang kit. I'm gonna show a clip real quick of the very end of that raid, because I did almost die right at the end, and it was really intense, but uh, yeah, here's the clip. Oh my god, dude, there's no way. So yeah, we got the kits, and um, yeah, now, I'm just in case you notice, I'm gonna have a red shield now, so we don't want any continuity errors, so I'm addressing it right now. But yeah, I really want this Infernal Cape, so let's get in there. You start the wave off by freezing these nibblers. These guys, they go for the pillars. They want to eat the pillars, they want to damage the pillars, and you don't want them to damage the pillars because this is our only way of hiding from monsters, like safe spotting them. Like, look at that, he can't touch me because it's safe spotted. I didn't land a freeze on the nibblers right away just because they were kind of spaced out when they spawned. And uh, what I did was I chased after them to go freeze them, or to go make sure they died. And that is called chasing the nibblers, and I have lost so many inferno attempts because of chasing the nibblers. It's something that I really need to work on not doing. Pretty much what you do is you should just land a freeze on the nibblers, and then even if you don't stick them all, like, just don't worry about them. Just freeze as many as you can and then take care of the other guys, because... Chasing after the nibblers is a surefire way to lose runs, and I have done it so many times, and I always hate myself for it. Oh my god, I hate it when they spawn so far apart like that. And after all the melee waves are over, we got our very first ranger. Every four ticks, you throw up a prey range, and you should be good. And now, all the ranger waves are done, so what do we have? Naturally, the major is next. 
So the Major hits even harder than the Ranger does, so you absolutely do not want to take one of those Mage hits off Prayer. It's like if the choice is between getting hit by a Major or hit by a Ranger, like you want to be prioritizing the Prey Mage. A four tick attack cycle, so every four ticks you want to pray against it. Um, the big thing that happens with this guy though is he has the ability to resurrect anything except for the Nibblers. So if you kill like a melee or something, it can resurrect it once for each wave. So you got to take that into consideration in the order that you kill them. Oh my God, I died. <laughs> I thought that was a good run too, but like, Look at my supplies. My supplies are so freaking good. Like I never die due to like running out of supplies. It's literally just me getting KO'd by me being stupid. I could have even brewed up, but I didn't really feel like it. I was just kind of banking on the fact that I would out DPS the, uh, the major and kill it really quick. Like I thought I would kill the major, but I didn't. And I don't know why I was relying on the fact that I would kill the major quicker than I was. I should never do that. I should just be like per flicking or something, but I'm not gonna force myself to do a second attempt. I will hate myself if I do that. We'll just do one per day, and this is my daily attempt, and we'll get him next time, boys. Oh God. That wasn't a good decision, but it's still fine. All right, wish me luck. Oh, come on. Have you ever seen a more humble wave in your entire goddamn life? What the hell was that? <laughs> That's the most humble wave of all time. Now it's got to figure out how to solve this. I'm just going to wait for the Melier to dig to me and kill it first. I think that's what I should do. Made it to Zuck. <laughs> Inferno is paused. This is the prison cell of Tizcal Zuck. This is the last thing standing between us and our infernal cape. Throughout the entire fight, you need to stay behind Zuck's shield. If you step out of place when he attacks, it's almost guaranteed that he'll hit you for over 100 damage and you'll have to start all over again. Pretty quickly into the fight, Zuck spawns what's called a set which is just a Major and a Ranger. They attack Zuck's shield until you aggro them onto you. It's very important here to pray Mage and DPS the Ranger down as fast as possible because you have to tank all of the range hits. In this kill, I took a lot of damage from the Ranger, which was a horrible way to start this fight. The next thing you do is you keep praying Mage and attack Zuck until he drops below 600 health, and then you can kill the Major. After the Major is dead, start attacking Zuck again and when he drops below 480 health, he spawns a Jad that you have to kill while staying behind the shield at all times. When Jad spawns his healers, be sure to drop a blood barrage on them to aggro them all at once. This fight is where a lot of people die during their first Zuck. But if you make it past Jad, then you can keep attacking Zuck like normal until he spawns another set. Deal with this the same way you dealt with the first. When Zuck drops below 240 health, he spawns his healers, which heal him until you aggro them off of him. They do an insane amount of damage with their attacks, so it's crucial to kill them as fast as possible with the blowpipe. Waste no ticks and make sure to drink brews when your health gets low. This, unfortunately, is as far as I got on my first Zuck attempt. No, nope, that's it. Dude, I had so many brews going into that, and I still died. You'd think that since I made it to Zuck, I'd be able to get back there pretty easily, but unfortunately, that's not always how it goes. What am I doing? Oh my god, what did I do that for? What did I do that for? What's happening? I'm dead. <laughs> Wow, 
what? I literally have no idea what to do right now. I'm fucking dead. Yeah, I only had one pillar. I didn't know where to run to, man. So annoying. Eventually, I did end up making it back to Zuck. So here's attempt number two. Now notice this part, I aggro the major off of the shield and onto myself, but I forgot to pray mage. And that's how you throw an inferno attempt in under a minute. Oh my god, dude. I tagged it on purpose, I just forgot to switch my prayers. That's literally just like, oh that's day one, dude, that's day one. <laughs> oh, I feel like an idiot, bro. I feel like a freaking idiot. After this death to old Zuckerberg, I got a message in my Discord. Somebody posted a link to a Zuck simulator. And hating the idea of making it all the way to Zuck just to die to him, I decided to check it out. And this has got to be the best RuneScape sim I've ever tried. You can pick your gear and inventory, set up the hotkeys, it feels just like you're playing RuneScape, and you get to practice killing Zuck. I'll link this in the description because it's a really great tool for anyone out there who's going for their first Infernal Cape. I ended up getting a couple Zuck kills on this thing, and it was amazing for my confidence. I felt like if I could just make it back to Zuck, I could get the cape for sure. So I hopped back in, eventually made my way back to Zuck, and here's attempt number two, because I am not counting the last one. I think this is it for me. Yep, saw that one coming. Dude, fuck you. <laughs> there was one hit, bro. There was only, there was only one hit. Dude, do not troll me right now, bro. Dude, you've gotta be kidding me. <laughs> this game sucks. Two Zuckerbergs in a row. There we go, we made it past the healers. Now all I gotta do is stay behind the shield. Fuck, dude, God, fucking damn it. I don't know if you saw what just happened there, but I needed to be standing on this tile in order to be safe from Zuck's attack but I was standing here instead. All I had to do was stay behind the shield and I would have had my cape, but I had to go and blow it in the worst way possible. I gotta tell you guys, this one really got to me. Morale was low, tensions were high, I was getting impatient. I wanted this cape bad, so I kept on going. All right, <laughs> we're at the end of wave 63 and we have all three pillars still. This is the golden run, I have to get it done now.
god, this is it. This is it. My god, this is one more hit, please. Is that it? Please stop messing with me, just hit it. That's it. The Inferno is complete! <laughs> Let's freaking go, dude. It is about damn time. Infernal Cape. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, it actually happened. It actually happened! Let's fucking go! <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit, dude. I'm so fucking happy right now. I tanked a Zuck hit. <laughs> Did you guys notice that? I tanked a Zuck hit. Oh my god. We got the freaking combat achievement for none of the pillars getting destroyed. We got the combat achievement for not using a Tebow. Could have got the one for not tanking a Zuck hit, but dude, I'm just happy. Oh my god. Right now, I'm already going to make a decision, and you can probably tell what I'm going to do looking at my inventory. A lot of people prefer the way the regular Infernal Cape looks to the Max Infernal variety, but I am in the group of people that think that the Infernal Max Cape looks cooler, so you will lose your Infernal Cape if you proceed. I don't like the way that sounds, but... I mean, it's just the Infernal Cape, it just looks better, so. Yeah, I knew I was gonna do this the whole time anyway. There it is. We got the Max Infernal Cape. Oh my god. It's been a long time coming. I'm finally good at the game! <laughs> I'm finally good at the game. That's an interesting note to end on, because I'm really not that great of a player compared to some of the best out there. I remember a couple years ago thinking I would never even get a fire cape because I died to Jad so many times, and I thought an infernal cape was completely out of the question. But here we are. It just goes to show you that with a little bit of discipline, I really think that anybody can get an infernal cape. I wanted to quit on this grind so many times, but I kept at it, and I made it out on the other side. So if you could take away anything from this video, just know that if I can do it, anybody can. And hey, one day, maybe I can even get another item I've always told myself was impossible for me. Thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Also, a massive shout out to the channel members. In the Dune Legends tier, we have Ia and Musha. In the Dune Lords tier, we have Icarus, Jacob P., Grimzoso, Humorbot, and Josh Funderberg. And in the Dune Lads tier, we have Cannon, Weirdo, Kai, Bash T, and The Corf. Thank you all very much, and if you'd like to support me and learn more about channel memberships, click the join button down below next to the subscribe button. Thank you all, and see you guys next time.